Hello and welcome to Oworm. Today we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of the lamprey. Lampreys come from an ancient extant lineage of jawless fish. They are protovertebrates, meaning that they're one of the earliest vertebrates to have evolved around 360 million years ago and are sometimes called living fossils. So a lamprey is a fish, but it's at the very beginning of the fish lineage. It's the most primitive fish. It has no business looking so bizarre as a fish, but it was actually a fish before all the other fish, so technically they're the most valid fish. The lamprey has some external structures that I'll show you. So here are the two eyes, one here and one on the other side there. And although they look opaque here, that's because of their preservative, and these eyes would be clear in a living organism. And between these two eyes is the small hole, which is the external nostril. And on the side, you see seven small holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and seven on the other side. So these are the external gill slits, which lead into the gills inside. Folklore sometimes refers to lampreys as eight ideals, because some people mistook these holes for eyes and thought that lampreys had eight eyes on each side. A lamprey has a single fin running down its back, and it's not paired like we saw in bony fish. This is the dorsal fin, and it has two parts, the anterior and the posterior part. Later fish like the perch evolved paired fins for more maneuverability. Lampreys move kind of like a snake through the water. This caudal fin here propels them forwards. Now, if you think that that would look stupid, you're right. But, lampreys are also apparently among the ocean's most efficient swimmers. So, maybe looking stupid is the way to go. So now I'm going to flip the lamprey over. Now down towards the tail, you can see two openings here. The one closer to the head, or the anterior hole, is the anus, the end of the digestive tract. The one closer to the tail here is called the cloaca, and it's the common opening for the urinary and the reproductive tract. I know I'm talking around the elephant in the room here, which is this terrifying mouth. I'll talk more about this later when we've opened it up, but you can see that there are these teeth lining it. I'm going to put a scalpel straight through its back until it touches the mat and move it forward until I reach the end of the head. Then I'm going to turn it around and continue in the other direction until I reach the end of the tail. Try to keep your scalpel as close to the middle as you can. There, so now we have two halves of a lamprey. So now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. I'll just focus on this one because it's better preserved than the other half. The first thing we'll take a look at is the mouth. So you should know that there are three kinds of lampreys. The flesh eaters, the blood suckers, and the ones that don't do much really. That last group spends up to seven years in a larval stage, feeding on food particles suspended in water, and only lives six months as an adult, living solely off reserves acquired at the larval stage. The other two kinds are more interesting though, and this lamprey is probably one of those two though it's hard to tell which one. So the most fearsome aspect of the lamprey is probably its mouth. Like I said before, lampreys don't have straws, so it's just a ring of circular muscle. But if you think those details will at all distract from its ridiculous mouth, you've got another thing coming. So here, this outer ring is made of these structures called the papillae which the lamprey uses to sense where best to attach to its prey. These are so sensitive that the lamprey can even use them to feel out underlying blood vessels in its prey. Usually, the flesh eaters tend to go for the back of the fish where there's more flesh, while the bloodsuckers go for the belly where there's more blood vessels. Now, these rings of hook teeth in the mouth are used by the lamprey to sink deep into the flesh of the prey. The circular ring muscles around its mouth also help by creating a suction. While those rings of teeth function mostly as just grippers, 
the thing that does the real damage is actually down here inside of the mouth. The lamprey has three teeth on the tip of their piston-like tongue to scrape through the surface tissues of its prey until they reach bodily fluids. While the bloodsuckers typically leave its prey alive, the flesh eaters often show no mercy. While the bloodsuckers mostly just suck blood, the flesh eaters strip the flesh of its prey right down to the bone. Only one out of seven fish survive such lamprey attacks. Most die from a condition called having, you know, a big hole in its body. Once the lamprey consumes either blood or flesh, the food will go down to its pharynx here. The pharynx then branches into the dorsal and the ventral branch. We'll follow the dorsal branch first. The dorsal branch of the pharynx leads into the esophagus, here, which continues down all the way here, and then the intestine. So no stomach in the lamprey, it goes from the esophagus to the intestine. You can see the intestine runs along all the way its body until it reaches the anus here. So I can actually pull out the intestine. So that's the intestine. So we saw the intestine here before and we saw the anus here before. What's really cool is that if I put my probe in here through the anus, it comes out through the intestine. Now we're going to backtrack to the pharynx, and this time we'll follow the ventral branch. The ventral branch leads to the gills, which the lamprey uses to breathe. You can also see that they kind of look like stacked mushrooms, one here and one here. These holes here are the internal gill slits and they're connected to the external gill slits right here, which we saw earlier. If I put my probe in to one of these internal gill slits, like that, you can see that it comes out through one of the external gill slits, like that. So the lamprey takes in water through its mouth, which travels to the ventral branch of the pharynx, goes through gas exchange in the gills, and leaves through the gill slits. So behind the gills here, you can see this structure, which is the heart. The heart is a muscular organ that pumps blood through the lamprey's body. And right behind that, you see this green triangle, which is the liver. The liver detoxifies blood and produces bile. And next to that, you see this structure, which runs all the way down here. This is the gonads, or the reproductive organs. And you can see that the intestine runs between the liver and the gonads. Now we'll move up to the head of the lamprey. Here's the nostril we saw before, and this structure it opens up to is called the olfactory bulb. The lamprey uses the olfactory bulb to smell. Right behind the olfactory bulb, this triangular structure here, is the brain of the lamprey. The brain connects to the spinal cord, which runs down the back of the lamprey. I can try to pick it up. Oh, it broke, but that's okay. Now, as I mentioned before, while the lamprey is a vertebrate, it is one of the most primitive vertebrates, and they don't have true vertebrae. Instead of vertebrae, they have a series of cartilaginous structures that provide support, which you can see right here. This is called the notochord, and it lends flexible support to the lamprey's body, and it runs all the way down. Alright, that's the end of our lamprey dissection. Thanks for staying, folks. Here's a fun fact about lampreys to send you on your way. While lampreys prefer to prey on cold-blooded animals like fish, they have been observed to attack humans on occasion if they are starving. Lampreys aren't shy about attacking much larger animals and have even latched onto large marine animals like sharks. So if you're afraid of the lamprey, stay afraid. Stay very afraid. 
In all seriousness, lampreys don't pose a significant risk to humans because you can just use your handy opposable thumb to remove them if they latch on. It still won't stop you from freaking out if you see one though.